Hey, what's going on guys? It's Swordaz here. Today I'm truly excited to review the new G915. This is a new flagship of Logitech in terms of keyboard that just does it all. So the question is, does it deliver? I'll get my first summary of the keyboard and then we'll get all into the nitty gritty of it. I think this is my new favorite keyboard if there was a 60% version. It has so many bells and whistles that are just so nice that now that I've had them, I just want them. I currently use the G Pro Series keyboard and I actually play with a keyboard at a vertical slant. I'm a low sensitivity player, so I want as much of the mouse mat as possible. I have used the G915 for about 30 hours now and I can really talk in depth about the new G915 and the pros and cons of it. It is also quite expensive, uh, but I'm gonna circle back on the cost towards the end of the video. So let's back up. What is this keyboard? The G915 is a low profile mechanical keyboard that is so thin as you can see in a comparison to a pencil. And also later in the video, I show the comparison to the G Pro series keyboard. The one I'm using, of course, is a linear switch. It feels faster, obviously, because the switches are not as large. This does not hinder the quality overall, though. The material is rock solid and breaking this thing would be a considerable amount of effort and force. Since it is so low profile, the question is, how does it feel comfort wise? I actually was concerned that it doesn't have a wrist pad. I figured it would be awful to use. But now after putting about 30 hours in, I actually really love the fact that this is so low profile. I have my wrist rest on the G Pro series and it just kind of feels like the keyboard is just too high. So it was just a small adjustment period. Again, it took about maybe one or two hours for me to kind of settle in with it. I do not even raise the keyboard. It does have the option underneath it, but I don't think it's necessary. You will notice that this keyboard is slightly longer than the average keyboard. That is because they have relocated the G keys to the far left. I do like what they have done with it as it provides a much easier access to keybinds. Previously, they had them at the top and it never really made any sense because it's just so far away to actually press the keybinds. Now that they're on the left, it kind of makes me wish that they were below the space bar as that's where most of my thumbs and fingers tend to hang over. I will admit it took me about another hour or so to adjust my finger placement. Mentally, the caps and other keys are always to the far left. So visually knowing there's another set of keys to the left kind of threw me off, but as I settled in, it made a lot of sense. Uh, uh, the G keys can be programmed within the software as well, and also the lighting of what we can come to expect with a full um, lit keyboard. And so in terms of, it really is top of the line in terms of uh, what it does. Above the keyboard to the far left are different settings. So you got one, two, and three in terms of mode, all done within G Hub. And to the right is a light speed wireless button. This is enabled through default, through the dongle provided on the keyboard. Uh, the latency is really not noticeable at all. It's really rock solid like the G Pro series and what Logitech is really known for in terms of their wireless. So I don't really have any gripe with that. Um, from my own personal experience, I just in terms of the wireless capability, I own a Model O and in comparison to the G Pro wireless, I don't even notice a difference and I score pretty high in Kovacs overall. So good way to kind of just test the extreme environments as well as when you're in a LAN area, which I have been in several instances and still don't really notice a difference. To the right of the light speed, you have the option for Bluetooth. You can use Bluetooth to connect to another device, kind of switch on the fly. There is added latency, but you need to be gaming for the effect to be noticeable with higher action per minute. You got the gaming mode, so in case you, you know, hit the Windows key, you can uh, avoid that problem. And of course you can adjust the brightness of the lighting of the keyboard. Speaking of lighting, the battery life since it is wireless is around 12 hours with full um, lighting on and is about 150 days with it off. It can charge in about 3 hours and you can plug it in using that while it's charging so it's obviously uh, really, really fantastic. On the far right there's a volume wheel. You can skip back and forth, play, pause, and mute. And of course, kind of summarize a bit more of this. You're really getting the top of the line in terms of keyboard that is wireless. There really is nothing on the market that really compares to this build quality and the cost is $250, well, $249.99. I can only say that the downside of this keyboard is that it's not a 60%. So if you want a smaller keyboard without all the bells and whistles that we stated, then obviously that's not your go-to keyboard, right? But if it was a 60%, I think that I don't really know anything else on the market that would compare to this in terms of wireless and features in terms of low profile without spending probably even more to get something custom done. If you guys do know of something, I would love to do a comparison between the two of these. So let me know in the comment section because I'd love to kind of know. I've, I tried to do a bit, a bit of research and just kind of find something, but everything kind of didn't really turn up <laughs> what I was looking for. Well, anyways, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Also, if you have follow-up questions, hit me up down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.